<laughs> okay, hello everyone. My name is Greg Martin. This is the first episode of This Week in Global Health, otherwise known as TWIG. Uh, this is going to be a one-stop shop for all the good, the bad, the ugly, the interesting, the indifferent, and maybe the outrageous on global health. Today is Wednesday, August the 27th, I think. Yes, that's right, 2014. My name is Greg Martin. I'll be your host. We're going to start off by introducing you to the various panel members that we've got with us today, just to let you know of course, we've got people that are watching this live, right? This is a live broadcast, so you can type in your questions in the section, just in the, in the, in, in the comment section. If you're watching this on Google+, Plus, there's going to be a comment section on the landing page or on the event page, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you could also be watching a live streaming version of this on YouTube. In the comment section below the video, you can send comments. We'll see those questions. We're going to have a question and answer session later on in the show. So remember to interact. This is the internet. We're supposed to interact. That's how it works. Right, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to ask the different members of the panel to introduce themselves, tell us where it is in the world they are, and tell us what it is that they're going to talk about in this week's show. So let's start off with Jessica. Talk to us, Jessica. Hey, everyone. I'm Jessica Taff, and I'm coming to you today from Maryland. Um, that's the Washington, D.C. metro area. And uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Ebola outbreak that's been going on in West Africa. Tell me, Jessica, if somebody's watching this show, can they interact with us over Twitter? So if someone wanted to send, uh, put a question via a tweet, is that possible? Absolutely. If you're on Twitter, tweet us. Just use the hashtag TWIGH, TWIG, TWIGH. And right, that so what does TWIGH stand for? Uh, this Week in Global Health. Excellent. Right answer. Okay, the next person, Vibhu, talk to us. What are you going to tell us about this week? Hi. Everybody, I'm Vipu Garg and I'm from India. At the moment, I'm based in Geneva and I'll tell you about a couple of news items at the moment with the BRICS Development Bank, which is now also known as the New Development Bank. Okay, and Vibhu, if somebody's watching this video in the future, so they're not watching it live, but they'd like to make a comment or interact with us in some way, is it too late for them or can they still interact with us and how would they do that? Absolutely. Everybody can interact with us anytime. Just put a comment below the video, video, no matter what time you're watching it, and we'll be able to pick it up. The video is going to be posted on www.youtube.com YouTube .com forward slash Dr. Craig Martin. Okay, that's right. And that's the site of the Global Health YouTube channel that this that's whole right. thing is being broadcast through. Uh, at the end of this video, I will also stick up where the links are and you'll be able to see them. You can write them down. You can tattoo them on your arm if you think you're going to forget them. Uh, very exciting stuff. Next person, Katie. Katie, talk to us. Where are you? What are you going to tell us about this week? Okay, Katie, you are currently muted. So we need you to unmute yourself if possible or learn great sign language and we'll just interpret it. I could be an interpreter. So my name is Katie Jackson, and I'm coming to you from Stockholm, Sweden. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about a mentorship program and also the Drugs for Neglected Disease Initiative. Okay, interesting. And Katie, if someone wanted to email us, so they wanted to get hold of us and send us their thoughts, pontifications, ideas, suggestions, criticisms, uh, adulations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so on and so forth, how would somebody get in touch with us via email? So yeah, it's super easy. It's this week in global health at gmail.com. All comments, questions, queries are welcome. Okay, brilliant. Okay, and last but not least, of course, Christy. Christy, talk to us. What are you going to tell us about this week and where in the world are you right now? I'm Christy Ronson and I am located in San Francisco, California currently. I'll be talking to you guys about requests for proposals and current open, open consultancies. Okay, that's very exciting, and I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in that, especially if they're looking for work in the global health space or if they're wanting to get a grant and they're looking for money for their project. That's the person to listen to, Christy. Uh, Christy, here's a quick question for you. If somebody wanted to get onto an email list and they wanted to receive emails from us, uh, telling us, telling them about when the next show will be and, and giving them an invite to that, or just emailing them the show notes with all the links, et cetera, et cetera, from any given show, can a person get onto such an email, address, uh, email list, and how would they do that? Yes, uh, it's also very easy. There's going to be a link in the description on our Google Plus event page as well as in the description on the YouTube site and that will take you to a form that you can fill in to go ahead and sign up to receive notifications and get involved. Okay, fantastic. Right, we're going to jump right into the show. Uh, we're going to start off with Jessica. Uh, Jessica, I wonder, could you give us a quick update on the Ebola virus epidemic, which everybody's talking about and it's very hot stuff in the media at the moment. Over to you, Jessica. 
Great, absolutely. I'm happy to give you an update on the Ebola outbreak. So this has been an outbreak that's been going on in West Africa for about a few months now, but it's recently gotten international attention as the WHO declared it a public health emergency. This completely makes sense because it's the biggest and scariest outbreak we've seen. There's been 26 people infected with 1,400 people dead, and this outbreak has a 50 to 60 percent mortality rate that's going on. It's in four countries now, and the incubation period from infection to disease, at which point some person will show symptoms and then they can pass it on to somebody else, that's 2 to 21 days. And that's one of the reasons that the WHO is saying it's going to take at least 6 to 9 months to get this epidemic under control. Okay, and let's hope that works. Now, I believe that there's reports of Ebola virus popping up in another country. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. So just in the past week, there's been reports of um, Ebola in the De Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, what people should know about this, this is not the same strain of Ebola that came from West Africa. It's a completely different strain. So we know that it didn't, well, we, at the moment, we are thinking it did not come from West Africa. Okay, so that's interesting. So it sounds like there's actually a second epidemic on the cook uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo at the moment. Absolutely. Africa now has two outbreaks of Ebola going on. Okay, interesting stuff. We're not going to talk more about Ebola virus. I know everybody's following this quite closely. Um, next, Vibu, or as I often call her, the Veepster. And I actually promised her that I wouldn't call her that on the show, but sorry, Vibu. Uh, Vibu, I wonder if you can talk to us a little bit about a couple of news items that you've been reading about recently. As Jessica just told us, obviously the global health space is dominated by Ebola. And just to add to that one interesting news, a bit sad, that the dogs have started eating Ebola-infected dead bodies in one of the townships in Liberia, which is obviously sparking concerns that these dogs might be spreading the virus. So, so that's a bit sad. And uh, on another note, going to another very interesting issue is cigarettes and electronic cigarettes to top that. So WHO yesterday just published a report urging governments to ban the sale of all cigarettes to the miners and it's obviously picked up very widely by the media. Okay, and that's, and that's e-cigarettes incidentally. Yeah, that's e-cigarettes incidentally. Okay, and, electronic uh, cigarettes, yeah. The electronic cigarettes, also known as e-cigarettes, of course. And just to let you know, as we've all you know, grown up with our parents thinking the more overweight we are, the healthy we are, and now the research is showing otherwise. To surprise yourself, we'll be posting all these links that I've just talked about with detailed reports if you want to read uh, more about these stories. So okay. I hope you do. Very interesting stuff. So there are going to be links to all of those news items in the show notes that you can read and you can read more. Um, that final one's quite interesting. So it turns out that that parents of overweight children erroneously believe that their children are in fact healthy at that weight. And so that's a very interesting piece of research that's come out. Um, definitely worth reading about. Right. Next, we're going to move on to Katie. Katie's done something very interesting and one of the things we want to do on the show is we want to profile interesting and new innovative in, uh, initiatives in the global health space. So Katie's done something interesting. Katie, can you tell us about your mentoring program? Yeah, so uh, MentorNet is a global health mentorship program now that's going into its fourth year. Um, we started this program coming from a need. When you go to global health conferences, you see two distinct crowds the ex experts, the experienced experts in the field, and the young people that are kind of trying to find their way. Um, so what we did is we named these young people SIPs, or Students and Young Professionals. So it's not ageist, you can be young in a career. Um, and global health being an incredibly dynamic and varied field, we thought it was really important to connect these two crowds. Uh, and so there was a need to equip SIPs with and the tools and direction that they needed to start out their global health career. Uh, the program specifically matches SIPs with mentors, keeping in mind both geographic location and subspecialty. Uh, and the pair maintains correspondence as they wish as they go along, and we hope that out of this program comes connections and networks and direction in life and their career. Okay, and Katie, how would somebody, let's say for example I was a young person and I was wanting to be connected up with a mentor in the global health space, or I was you know, someone that's been around the block a couple of times and I've got a bit of gray hair and I'm happy to pass on some of that wisdom to the younger generation, how would people get in touch with you or how would people get in touch with this initiative? It sounds fantastic. Uh, what, what is the next step? So it's under an uh, organization called the Canadian Society for International Health. And so the website is csahmentornet.wordpress.com or you can email at csahmentornet at gmail.com. Okay, and we'll put that information into the show notes as well so you can click on the link that will be there. Uh, one last question, Katie. Is it just for Canadians? No, so it's actually started, uh, it's a Canadian start, um, but we see no reason not to include it uh, with everyone else, so we're looking to expand. Okay, brilliant, thanks very much. Right, now, very, a lot of people are talking about the new BRICS Bank. 
um, and I believe it's not called the BRICS Bank, it's actually the New Development Bank, and I'm going to ask Vibu to give us a quick update. What is the BRICS Bank? Who are the BRICS? Uh, what does all of this mean? Is this the New World Bank IMF? Uh, Vibu, please talk to us. Craig, so BRICS, of course it's called the New Development Bank now, but BRICS, as as we some of us know, BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So these make up the BRICS countries, and Brazil recently hosted the sixth meeting of the heads of the state, so a very, very important meeting in July this year. We have the BRICS group, and they have signed 100 billion US dollars to create this bank as a currency pool with another 100 billion dollars as a reserve. And what are they going to be doing? They're going to be fostering greater financial and development cooperation amongst these five emerging markets. They are all and as we all know, BRICS account for 40% of the world population. They're 40% of the global burden of diseases and 20% of the global GDP. So, okay. of course, they've made valuable contributions to the global health, and that's what they want to uh, foster more. All right, so it's an interesting sort of uh, economic development bank. Uh, it's going to it's going to finance infrastructure. It's kind of almost a counterbalance to the W the, the World Bank and the IMF, if I understand correctly. Uh, it'll be very interesting to follow this over time and see how things unfold. Um, so, and we're going to have links to more information about that in the show notes, so you can follow up if you're interested. Next, um, Katie, can you talk to us about DNDI, one of my favorite organizations? <laughs> I don't know. Is your favorite? So uh, an annual report was recently released from the DNDI, or Drugs for Neglected Disease Initiative, um, and it highlighted the advancements made on the research of drug development for neglected diseases. These include uh, diseases like Chagas disease, sleeping sickness, and leishmaniasis. The Drugs for Neglected Disease Initiative works to promote awareness for the needs of neglected illnesses, uh, to improve the research into new drugs, and ensure equitable access for all. This collection of diseases affects over 1 billion people worldwide, um, and comparatively very little research and treatment development goes into these diseases. Uh, in the report, the organization calls for the, this lack of investment into the illnesses, the unmet uh, need in global health. Um, but it isn't all bad news. Six treatments have been delivered to 12 novel candidates, uh, and they're currently in the stages of preclinical and clinical development. So maybe what this organization needs is a creative campaign like throwing ice water on yourself or growing a mustache to get some awareness. Okay, that sounds interesting. Again, some interesting facts that you might be interested in. Between 1975 and 2004, there's been about 1,500 new drugs that have been approved. Only 21 of those drugs were for uh, tuberculosis and tropical diseases. So that's about 1.3%. Uh, and yet those diseases account for about 11 or 12% of the global burden of disease. So there's a huge imbalance. DNDI are really making a lot of ground in terms of trying to redress that balance. Uh, thanks very much, Katie. That was tremendously interesting. Next, we're going to talk to our good friend, Christy. Christy's going to talk to us a little bit about some calls for proposals or requests for proposals from funding organizations that are out there and one or two consulting jobs that have been asked for. Uh, I won't say more. Uh, Christy, can you just jump right in there? Thank you, Greg. Um, so really quickly to go over some RFPs, we are highlighting two organizations. Uh, doing great work. The first is a call for grant proposals and submissions from the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. Um, they're looking for people to do reporting projects on global health and the future of the global development agenda. Um, anything that can engage the public, advance understanding among policymakers. Um, and the topics of focus include everything from reproductive health to food security, sanitation, infectious diseases. Uh, and new or neglected perspectives are always very interesting to them. Uh, also, always ongoing are global health, excuse me, concept memos from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, they should include questions regarding the scope and the outcomes and risks of the project. And again, same topics as the Pulitzer. It has to do a lot with enteric and diarrheal diseases, malaria, tuberculosis, food security, etc. Um, two calls for contracting or consultancy positions that we have. One is from UNAIDS. It's the Technical Assistance on HIV Sustainable Financing Frameworks. Um, they're looking for a contractor to assist UNAIDS with the analysis and technical support in sustainable HIV financing framework. Um, and we're going to have links, by the way, to all of these organizations and these postings available on the YouTube page as well as the description below. Uh, and our second consultancy position is through the WHO, and they're looking for a technical writer. Um, it's for their Hidden Cities Project, which was a global report of urban health that sort of helped unmask and overcome health, health inequities in urban settings. 
Um, the deadline for the WHO submission is September 6th, and for the UN AIDS Technical Assistance position, it'll be September 11th, both of this year. Okay, brilliant. Thanks very much, Christy. Now, we're going to go on to a section of the show where we have a couple of questions and answers. So we let people, people that have been watching the show may have some questions because this is the first show. I'm not even sure if we're going to have many questions this time around, but we're certainly going to give a little bit of space for people to ask questions. And just to let you know, going forwards, uh, you can also post questions to us in advance of a show, and we'll try and build those you know, answers to those questions into the show itself or address them in this section of the show. Um, and along those lines, I had someone email me a question and ask me to address this on the show tonight. And you know, while I talk about this, Christy can just look to see if there's any questions that have been sent in uh, while we've been talking. So somebody said to me that they're wanting to get involved in the global health space and they want to study further and they noticed that I had done a medical degree and an MPH and an MBA and they said, which of these should they study? Uh, they were trying to make decisions about what to do next. Now. The, the short answer is, is very simple. The, if you're wanting to get involved in the global health space, probably the best thing that you can do in terms of studying is do an MPH. So that's a master's in public health. And there's so many different masters in public health out there, and, and we can put links in the show notes to a whole lot of programs. In fact, we'll probably do a whole show just on MPHs and, and, the, and the variety that are out there because you can do very specialized MPHs. You can, you can focus on epidemiology. You can focus on uh, uh, reproductive, maternal, newborn, and child health. You can focus on, uh, you know, on, on human rights. There's a whole lot of things you can focus on, or you can do something that's quite general. But the point is an MPH is probably the best thing you can do to get a good grounding in public public health and will enable you to add value in a whole lot of ways. If you did a medical degree, you might get involved in the global health space in a different kind of way, potentially. So you might want to run around Africa with a syringe and a stethoscope and actually kind of be making a difference right at the coal face. Or the fact that you have a medical degree often gives you credibility and conversations around policy, et cetera, et cetera. But to do a medical degree in its entirety, knowing that you don't want to practice medicine, but you just want to be in global health, that's a huge that, that's a huge undertaking. There's a huge opportunity cost, and you might want to think about that quite carefully. And I, and I often say the same thing to people about that are talking about wanting to do PhDs, for example. A PhD is a great stepping stone into doing a career in research. If you have no interest in research, a PhD is a huge time commitment. It's, there's a massive opportunity cost, uh, and you might want to think about whether a PhD is the right thing for you. Uh, the answer to the question about an MBA, I'm really glad that I did the MBA because it's given me a lot of understanding about the nuts and bolts as to how organizations get things done and wherever you land up working that's you know 90% of public health is just getting stuff done so if you did an MBA that's not a bad thing you'll definitely find that useful um, so that's the answer to that question Christy uh, any questions from the public at this point right now no we do have a lot of activity on Twitter and on the Google Health uh, I'm sorry the Google Plus page uh, but no direct questions thus far okay then what I'm gonna do is this uh, something a little bit uh, we're gonna we're gonna stay on here and wait for any other questions that come in and we're going to answer them but and and every show is going to be like this we're going to, at the end of the, at, at about this point in the show I'm going to say goodbye to the people that are watching this on YouTube in other words the YouTube clip if you're watching this in the future at some point that's going to end shortly uh, but we'll stay on so not, we'll all just stay here for the next little while and if anybody interacts with us or sends us a question we can respond to that and we can have a little bit of uh, have a little bit of back and forth um, I'm going to quickly just let you know a little bit about uh, the, the YouTube channel. So you can subscribe to the YouTube channel on the screen at the moment. Well, I hope if this has worked, you'll see a link. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, all the links on the screen that you're seeing at the moment will be clickable. You can click on them and it'll take you straight there. If you're watching this live, these aren't clickable because I haven't had a chance to put in, you know, to make it clickable yet. But uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get uh, email alerts when there's new videos that are posted, even over and above these Twig videos. Uh, there's a site that you can support us. Okay, it's at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Dr. Greg Martin. Uh, we are wanting support for this channel. You can follow us on Google Plus. Uh, and then there's other videos that you can watch and you can click on any of those. Um, okay, so in terms of the YouTube video, this is goodbye. Thanks for watching. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. We'll speak to you soon. Until next time, uh, stay well.